I've been using Intel 13-inch base MacBook Pro as my travel and go-to computer for two years. The specs are on the screen and my full review video is in the description. It only had 128GB of internal storage by the way, but it wasn't an issue for me most of the time. I sold it a couple of weeks ago, but I still do remember the user experience and also I did a couple of tests to compare it with my future MacBook Pro M1 Max and my wife's M1 Pro 16-inch MacBook Pro which I have right here. So I've been testing and using the base M1 Pro 16 inch for two weeks now, edited more than 20 videos on it, took it to a plane and a train ride, and I'm ready to share with you my experience and feelings about it in comparison with 13 inch 2019 base MacBook Pro with Intel processor. What's good guys, my name is Oleg Nikitin, you're watching No Limits on channel from Russia with love, and I know all of you want to hear about the performance test, so let's get to it. Since I'm a professional videographer with more than 10 years of editing experience, let's take video editing in Final Cut Pro X as our main threshold. I couldn't work with 4K at all without making ProRes or proxies, even in better performance playback mode on the 13-inch Intel MacBook Pro especially with the Sony a7S III 10-bit 4K 50 frames a second XAVC codec, which I use all the time. By the way, I have a separate episode about video codecs and best settings for export, you can check it right here and in the description below. Even my 5K iMac with such specs, you can see those on the screen, cannot use this codec without transcoding to ProRes or proxies. The M1 Pro handles it beautifully. No lags, no stuttering, even in better quality mode. And finally, I don't have to make proxies or shoot in ProRes only using a separate recorder. Stabilizing clips and render is also multiple times faster. Let me show you some numbers. 3 minutes and 10 seconds wedding video, pretty regular situation. Sony a7S III, 4K 50 and 4K 100 frames per second. One lot and color correction at each clip, also one title, slow down clips, speed ramping, background music, and I was using the Samsung T7 to edit off of and render to desktop. Also I used H.264 to 4K file export setting, no background applications open and the fans were blazing on the MacBook Pro 13. And we have a render time of 15 minutes and 15 seconds and the battery drain from 100% to 78%. At the same time, M1 Pro 16-inch MacBook Pro, the base model with 16GB of RAM, did it in 1 minute and 39 seconds. The battery drain was from 100 to 100, maybe, let's say, 99%. And then I tried to throw in the Dagestan video, you can also watch it on my channel, and the render time was 5 minutes and 35 seconds for more than 10 minutes of the video length. Also with drone footage, A7S III, 50 frames a second, and a lot of different stuff. I didn't even hear the fans working at first, and it lost only 2% of the battery life, versus around 50 minutes of render time on the 13-inch, with the sound of a vacuum cleaner all the time, and be dead to the end of this render if I wasn't charging it. So right here you can see a huge difference between those two machines. I do understand that the prices are pretty different. Yeah, the 13-inch 2019 base model is not the best MacBook Pro out there, but look at that. 3900 MacBook Pro 16-inch with 2.4 GHz Intel Core i9 8-core processor, 64 gigs of 2666 MHz DDR4 RAM, AMD Radeon Pro 5600M 8 GB of memory and 2 TB of storage, and look how it compares in different applications to the base 16 in M1 Pro MacBook. It's just outstanding and the price difference is ridiculous for this type of performance. But let's have a look at other aspects of work of the M1 Pro MacBook. Battery life. M1 Pro is literally one of the most power efficient yet powerful processors ever made. The battery life is better than on the M1 Max and compared to Intel models it's just like night and day. I could completely kill a battery in one hour of intense rendering with the Intel MacBook Pro, whereas M1 Pro 16-inch can handle about 4 to 5 to 6 hours of intense video editing and rendering work, which is very impressive. And if you're watching movies, browsing, working with documents and so on, you'll be able to spend all day using your 16-inch MacBook Pro with M1 Pro chip without even charging it. Portability and weight. 1.4 kilos versus 2.1 kilos. Let's be honest, it's really not that portable. The 16-inch M1 Pro is very dense and a little bulky, 
The charger is also bigger and heavier, which makes the total weight difference around 700 grams, but you save a little on dongles, because you almost can't use 13-inch MacBook Pro with only two Thunderbolt ports, and it's very limiting. Working on a train and a plane is definitely more comfortable with a smaller MacBook. The tray table in this Russian train is just exactly the size which I need for my wife's 16-inch MacBook Pro with M1 Pro to fit in. But overall, I wouldn't say it's a dramatic difference, and I'm pretty okay to carry this laptop with me, considering its power and abilities. Screen and speakers. Since I don't own the 13-inch Intel MacBook Pro anymore, let me show you the comparison with my wife's old 2016 MacBook Pro 15-inch in terms of speakers and screen quality. The screen is just outstanding. The black levels are great, but you do see some ghosting when you have white or bright objects on completely black screen. Like here on my desktop. I made it almost completely black to visually hide the notch in the apps without using full screen mode. And when you have brighter wallpaper, you do see the notch and the thin line beneath it and you can't really do anything with it and it's very annoying. But with black or very dark wallpaper, it's okay. And I decided to go this way. The speakers, just amazing. Just believe me, this is the best laptop experience in terms of sound I ever had. Nice bass, crisp and clear sound, I was just amazed how good the speakers are. Keyboard and trackpad. MacBook Pro 13 had two major keyboard issues. First being butterfly keys with tiny travel and occasionally the keys were stuck and you had to use the air blower to release it. And the second is that the keyboard left the print on the screen because it was touching the screen when you closed down the laptop. Both problems are solved on the M1 Pro and M1 Max MacBooks. And the black background of the keyboard is looking very fresh and cool. The only thing I miss a little is a touch bar. I know a lot of people hate it, but I found it's pretty useful when typing and a few other cases. And by the way, in the 16-inch MacBook Pro, we do have additional place for it above full-size function keys row. And be cool if Apple made it as an option to add the touch bar on top of the keyboard, but maybe it's a nightmare in terms of the design. Just my suggestions. And the trackpad was excellent on the 13-inch Intel MacBook Pro, but the size of it in the 16-inch MacBook Pro is just awesome. So much room for your gestures and fingers. The overall speed in macOS and browsing. Without putting two computers side by side, it's a little tough to judge the speed of browsing experience and overall macOS snappiness, but the M1 Pro is definitely faster, and all the synthetical tests show that as well. But it's not something crucial for me. Fan noise. You start to hear the 13-inch if you open one tab in Chrome, working with any footage in Final Cut Pro X, editing photos in Lightroom, even watching a movie online and especially if you do streaming, which was so freaking annoying that I thought about buying a fanless MacBook Air with M1 just for streaming, because I simply couldn't get clean sound. I never heard the fan of M1 Pro 16-inch MacBook, not a single sound in two weeks of intense usage. Even exporting big 4K and even 8K projects with 4K 100 frames per second 10-bit footage and very heavy color grading. And finally, the price. I bought 13-inch 2019 model for $1200, and the 16-inch M1 Pro is more than double the price at $2500. It's 100% worth it. In my opinion, the 16-inch M1 Pro is a sweet spot laptop for prosumers, photographers and videographers and it'll easily last for more than 5 years. But it's not perfect and it's not for everyone. And also now we have a much cheaper great option, the M1 MacBook Air, which I'm gonna be comparing to the M1 Pro and my old MacBook Pro 13 inch soon. And as well I'm making a huge M1 MacBooks buyer's guide comparing all the M1 computers in different configurations and different software like Final Cut, Xcode, Blender, Lightroom, Logic Pro and more to find the best bang for a buck and best options for different software and applications. So stay tuned for those two videos guys. Hope you enjoyed this episode and if you did smash the like and subscribe buttons and hit the notifications bell. My name is Alek Nikitin from Russia with love, no limits on channel and I see you guys in the next video. Take care, bye.